I'm Martha DeGrasse with RCR Wireless News, and we're here with Roger Hutton from Net America and Ron Strecker from Panhandle Telephone. Roger, you have some big news today that you'd like to share with us? We do. We're very excited today. We've actually announced the uh, rollout of our new national service brand that will be used by all the members of the uh, Net America Alliance as they come on. And uh, the name of that uh, new brand is Bonfire. Give you a little bit of background about the uh, foundation for that. We did uh, extensive research across rural America in 15 states, created over 60 hours of interviews with customers, and we determined that there were certain attributes in rural America that a brand needed to speak to well. And we found that those are really people are uh, focused on fun and family and community. They also value the uh, value as a, a key element, and dependability is a key element. And you know, making friends and belonging. People in rural America don't just live there; they belong to the community. Feel like the community belongs to them. And so we felt like Bonfire was a name that really captured the essence of those uh, attributes and spoke well to the community. We took that name back out into focus groups, and it's been really well received and responded to. So we're really excited about announcing the brand. And of course, the other part of our announcement is is that our member Panhandle Telephone Co-op is uh, actually the first to roll that brand out in the Oklahoma Panhandle by uh, bringing uh, like 45 sites on with LTE. And so Ron Strecker, the CEO of Panhandle, is here and can talk to you about that exact build out. Thank you very much. Ron, before you speak, we just want to hear a little bit about the investment that NetAmerica's made and the way that the carriers have an opportunity to participate in that. A large part of our NetAmerica Alliance uh, strategy is really to build scale. What we find is with these large, with these uh, large license areas and the small companies that really acquired them, it's difficult for them to deploy LTE technology cost effectively. So a lot of our interest is in building scale, and uh, the particular pieces of the network that uh, we we acquired for a shared purpose among all Alliance members was really an IMS supercenter and a NOC operation. Effectively, the uh, individual member builds their local network, that is they install the radios on the towers and they provide the switch out in the uh, area where they operate. And then they connect to the uh, IMS Supercenter and the NOC that's provided on a centralized basis. And those are shared by all the members of the Alliance. So a very expensive operation, one they probably couldn't afford themselves. But the key to that technology is, is that it will be the differentiator. It will allow us to drive services, IP-based services, into the marketplace to effectively compete in the new world. Thank you very much. Okay, Ron, you're a member of this alliance. Tell us a little bit about your experience. Uh, thank you. Uh, first, a little bit about Panhandle Telephone Co-op. It was formed in the 19, 1950 simply because other carriers refused to serve the high-cost rural areas. So the people that was left behind formed their own company, a cooperative. And over the years, uh, they grew an acquisition to essentially serve the, the bulk of the Oklahoma Panhandle with extensions into New Mexico and the Texas Panhandle. Likewise, in the early 1990s, we become an, a cellular operator by owning and operating our own cellular network, which we continue to do today. In the late 1990s, we started to offer broadband with a DSL offering, and then in the early 2000s, we started offering video services. So today, we're one of those few companies that offer what I call the Grand Slam solution. One of the problems, though, that we have in our in the Oklahoma Panhandle area is it's very sparsely populated and it's really high cost to serve beyond the city limits. And when the FCC come out with the new broadband order or, or new national broadband plan, they was recommending speeds of four down and one up and the extended reach DSL that we had serving parts of our rural area wasn't capable of doing that. I did not want to invest millions of dollars to get fiber to people's homes, understanding how universal service support was going to be restructured as well as access. So we was having to look at a more cost-effective technology. In the process of looking at that, we looked on our own, and we was getting prices from various vendors, and then NetAmerica uh, come up with a price that beat all of those. So it become a... a uh, it was a matter of cost that drove us to Net America. Uh, you know, we was able to get the uh, e-node bees or the cell sites and the and the uh, local gateway through uh, Net America much cheaper than if we'd have got it 
individually on our own through some other vendor. The other great thing that Net America offers is us to share in their super center. I couldn't afford that super center. Or if I did, I couldn't afford the ongoing annual maintenance fees. And my cost from Net America is less than what I would be paying some vendor in the annual maintenance fees if I owned that core router or that super center. So it's just been a great thing for us to do to partner with, with Net America. And I think in today's world, where we're having to depend on, on our own end user revenues and less on support revenues, we have no choice but to find ways to partner with others. Now, we're going to first roll this out to our fixed broadband customers that live outside the city limits. It's going to replace the extended reach DSL that currently serves about 800 customers. But the beauty of this, it's also going to be there to serve our mobile broadband customer as technology or as equipment becomes available for the end user. And do you have any sense about what some of the most compelling and um, valuable services for these consumers will be as they begin to be able to take advantage of 4G LTE in the months ahead? Well, I know to begin with, it's just going to be faster data speeds for our customers. And I'm going to let Roger speak more to what Net America is developing as far as enhanced services. Well, we have a roadmap that's been developed for the rollout of advanced services uh, fueled by our IMS Supercenter. And, you know, I guess I'd describe it as it's no, it's no one's killer app that's going to come from that. It's really the, the basis of this uh, technology allows us to really connect people allows them to use the same looking interface across all kinds of devices. They can, they can look at a screen, it's going to look the same on their smartphone, on their pad, on their TV, uh, on their laptop. And so, uh, and they're going to be able to control and develop and design that environment that they want to have their telecommunications provided to them on their own. And this technology is really what fuels that ability. We'll be able to develop services where they can drag people into their uh, spheres and circles and communities of interest or affinity. And so it's going to really uh, be able to customize telecommunications to the preference of the customer. And uh, so in that sense, you know, I'm not going to name one single service that's going to roll out. You really have to think in terms of IMS being a toolbox based upon which we can really design communications that uh, people really want to have to make their lives more convenient and uh, able to communicate better and control the communication with the sphere of people that they want to communicate with. Okay, Roger Hutton, Ron Strecker, thank you both very much for joining us here at the RCI Spring Expo.